This morning we found out that, or I guess over the weekend we found out that more of these uh, UFOs have been shot down uh, <clears throat> over the United States and Canada. Uh, very little information about what they are, balloons, uh, uh, drones, what exactly these, uh, these things are. Two of them were uh, 20,000 uh, feet above ground, so uh, in the area where commercial airlines operate, so they were deemed a risk. Uh, to commercial airlines, um, uh, the fourth one I'm not sure. I think was was in higher altitude. Um, <clears throat> China's, of course, come out and said um, that the United States operates balloons over Chinese territory, and and the Americans have come out and denied that. And um, <laughs> I mean, it is the whole thing is a little comical. It it turns out that these uh, UFOs have been tra traveling over the United States. For, for, for a long time and, uh, you know, during the Trump administration, there were a number of these balloons and other things that traveled, but that uh, the military it, it did not discover that until after the fact. Uh, the reason these three additional UFOs were discovered and shot down was because the uh, U.S. has um, increased the sensitivity of its radar so now they can get smaller objects and, and objects, I guess, that like, like balloons that are not obviously detectable uh, by radar, I guess, and, and at altitudes that I think the radar doesn't bother to look at. So uh, increased sensitivity has discovered that there are a lot more of them. It turns out that China has a, a massive uh, surveillance program that uses these kind of... Uh, these kind of, I guess, balloons or whatever they turn out to be, uh, kind of uh, drones, self-propelled something, um, it, it, as part of their general spying on the rest of the world, um, uh, signal intelligence, uh, spying on our phone calls. I'm sure they're listening into this, uh, to this YouTube channel, although that they can get publicly, so maybe, maybe why waste? Uh, anyway, uh, maybe some cameras, who knows what's on these things, but... Uh, a, a bunch of, I, I assume, surveillance, different types of surveillance. The other, the other I think, uh, possibility is that some of these uh, UFOs are meant to test U.S. detection capabilities, uh, test U.S. missile or laser, whatever capabilities, if, if maybe one of these little things can get in and is not seen by lasers, then by, uh, sorry, by radar, then maybe in a, uh, in a war situation, uh, a drone could be flown in with a missile or, or, or something else that might evade the radar. So um, I guess the Chinese are now getting the signal that if the U.S. sets its equipment to the right level of sensitivity, then uh, all of these, uh, all of these uh, things can and will uh, be detected. And, uh, and, and that is a lesson learned for the Chinese. I, you know, this is an ongoing, this is ongoing a game of espionage that is happening. I mean, the U.S. basically spies on everybody. We know that. We know they spy on our, uh, we, you know, the U.S. spies. We spy on our allies. We spy on our friends. Uh, was it the NSA at some point was listening to Angela Merkel's cell phone conversations? Um, we, we have uh, a wide array of satellites and, and very sophisticated satellites that can pick up uh, all kinds of information from all kinds of places around the world. Uh, who knows what else we have? I, I don't know if the U.S. uses balloons. I'm sure it uses drones and all kinds of surveillance drones. Uh, obviously, it has used in the past all kinds of surveillance airplanes, uh, AWACSs, and so on, all over the world. I mean, uh, I don't know that there's an area of the world in which um, the United States does not uh, actively spy on in one way or another. Uh, and, and, and the same, I'm sure, is true of China, and I'm sure that Russia aspires the same thing, although I think Russia doesn't have the capabilities and doesn't have the budget and doesn't have the, the, the ability to do it. Um, so, it, so, I mean, this is a lot of hot air, hot air balloons, something like that. I mean... Uh, Again, it, it, this is all a consequence of the fact that our government keeps so many secrets from us. But uh, the fact that the Chinese spy on us should not be a secret to anybody, should not be a surprise to anybody. Uh, the fact that they uh, spy on us in a variety of different ways, 
at using a variety of different te uh, techniques. It should not be a surprise to anybody. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. The real danger, I think, is, and, and this is something I think we need to be aware of and conscious of and follow, is uh, the, the real risk of uh, escalation between the United States and, and China where neither party really means to escalate. That is kind of escalation out of default or escalation out of fear or escalation uh, really without the real intent and without any kind of thoughtful intent. Um, you can see already the rhetoric in the U.S. about uh, the Chinese and what the Chinese are doing, and, and the rhetoric in China is probably even worse vis-a-vis -vis what the Americans are doing and what they deserve and what they don't deserve, and their fault is this and that. This does not help, and, and indeed, it, it only intensifies the potential for conflict. It intensifies uh, the potential for each country to make mistakes and to uh, treat e each other as enemies where it is not necessary for China and the United States to be enemies. Uh, now, one could argue that as China become more authoritarian, it, ha it will become one more of an enemy of the United States, but there's no reason to accelerate that trend. There's no reason to encourage that trend. Uh, particularly, there's no urgency to it. The United States needs time to diversify its supply chains before it elevates China to the level of enemy. Um, so I think, I think uh, calm heads need a rule. And, and uh, with this, like, like uh, most of these foreign policy issues, people jump to, uh, to, to I think, conclusions and jump uh, to uh, statements that are just irresponsible particularly when you take into account the context. The context is the U.S. and China spy on each other constantly in many ways that you probably know of and in many ways you probably don't know of. And just discovering one other way, one new way that the spying is going on uh, means very little. Um, I, don't think, I don't think the United States benefits right now from a cold or certainly not from a hot war with China. Um, uh, the United States needs to be uh, on alert. It needs to be ready for... for for example, a Chinese invasion of Taiwan or something like that. The United States certainly um, it, it needs to be bolstering its military and its intelligence capabilities in anticipation of conflict in the future, given the direction China is heading. But there's absolutely zero reason to use rhetoric or anything else that accelerates, without compromising anything, just accelerates um, the likelihood of conflict. It's, it's just... It's just it, 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 it's, a, it's a sign of weakness, and uh, it is completely unnecessary, uh, wh whoever happens to be in the White House at every given point in time. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.